Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is a cunning player on an harp, and it shall come to pass, when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. From Samuel 16:16, 16, 16, according to the Bible, Sinai Publishing, 1996. And it came to pass, when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took an harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Samuel 16:23, according to the Bible, Sinai Publishing, 1996. We begin this video with the question, can music heal? As evidenced above, Saul was certainly comforted by David's playing of the lyre. Have you ever tried to describe music? I find this very difficult, because we all use and relate to music in so many different ways. Perhaps more important, we all react to music in different ways. Therefore, rather than giving you a description of what music is, I will tell you what I believe music does. I believe that music acts as a conduit for audible energy. When we hear this energy, according to a TED talk given by sound and communication expert Julian Treasure, our body may have a marked physiological, psychological, or even cognitive response. Furthermore, music may even cause us to alter our behavior. As I write this, I think about what happens when you enter clothing stores like Gap, American Eagle, and the Banana Republic. Immediately, you are bombarded with a certain type of music that is meant to energize you and designed to make you feel a certain way. Is this subliminal hypnotizing? You bet, but that's a topic for a different post. Going back to our initial question, can music heal? I believe that the answer is yes, but with a disclaimer. As a classically trained violinist and musician, I am acutely aware of the power of music and I am highly sensitive to the sounds around me. I know that music has a great power and that, like food, too much of a good thing is bad. Music, as stated above, can be incredibly hypnotic, and once we get hooked on it by endorphins that music does cause our bodies to produce, we become dependent on it like a drug. Therefore, the answer to the question, can music heal, is yes, but not permanently, and when used inappropriately, not without giving up your own personal freedom. Now, on a positive and constructive note, let's talk about some wonderful applications that music can be used for in regards to health. According to themindunleashed.org, music can do a number of positive things for the body. I will focus on two of the seven benefits cited. 1. Music improves visual and verbal skills. I know this from direct experience. My 20-month-old son has heard Twinkle Twinkle Little Star many times per day since the day he was born. By around six months old, he was already humming the melody. Furthermore, at that age, he could even hum alternating corresponding phrases with me. Such as, I would hum the first part, he would hum the second, I would hum the third, and he would continue the song with the fourth, etc. Needless to say, melody comes naturally to him, as it does with many babies. Month by month, it is very interesting to see my son try to fill in the melody with the words. For months, he was able to sing the song with the syllables ba ba, partly because we also sang ba ba black sheep, which has the same melody. Now, when we sing Twinkle, he can say up ba for up above and how for how I, among others. So to me, it is obvious that he is learning sounds by contour, also called inflection and pitch. The next mental leap to me involves filling in these contours with the actual consonants. How does this apply to older students and adults? In June 2014, a Harvard University Boston Children's Hospital study was published in PLOS.org stipulating that children who have had regular musical training are at an advantage in a wide variety of disciplines in school. According to the Waco Tribune, 
Their findings indicate that playing an instrument seems to promote the brain's executive functions, which contribute to a person's ability to pay attention, manage time, organize thoughts, and even regulate behavior. 2. Music affects the heartbeat, pulse rate, and blood pressure. As mentioned above, music is a conduit for audible energy. Do you constantly run on high steam? Or perhaps you are the type who needs multiple coffees to just get through the day. Music has the power to act as a stimulant, like coffee, or a relaxant, like chamomile tea. Our bodies react very primitively to a primal beat. The loud and repetitive thumping of workout music can take over our brains and rev up our engines. Conversely, the steady and unwavering sounds of waterfalls and nature can sedate us. According to The Mind Unleashed, at Abbott Northwestern Hospital in Minneapolis, men and women who listened to music soon after undergoing cardiac surgery were less anxious and reported having less pain than those who just rested quietly. So we know that music can calm the heart and soul. Does this mean that the answer to can music heal is yes? Again, the answer is temporarily yes, but I wouldn't rely on it as a permanent solution. If you are running on high steam all the time or can't get out of bed, then it's important to find the root cause and not let music act as a band-aid. In conclusion, music is an external energy source that has the power to change your internal energy. Our pulse, heart rate, blood pressure, and mental activity are all affected by external sound. I believe that it is dangerous to assume that music can provide a permanent solution for what ails us, but it certainly helps us to deal with certain temporary situations, as was the case with Saul and the patients undergoing cardiac surgery. Would I prefer the soothing sounds of Mozart's adagio to the loud and angry sounds of heavy metal during gum surgery? Absolutely. But what I do know is that if I am dealing with daily pain, whether physical or emotional, no music in the world will give me a permanent solution. Enjoy music responsibly.